Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our latest vlog. We're super excited to have these two gentlemen on, on our show today. They're really impressive. We literally have the Australian Warren Buffett and <laughs> the guy that's running the Birkenshire Hathaway of Australia. I introduce you to the chairman of Washington Soul Pats, Mr. Robert Milner, and the CEO, Todd. Gentlemen, how are we? Good morning. Thank you very much. Oh, very, kind of very flattering introduction, I must add. <laughs> well, you know, the facts speak for themselves. It's it's pretty much true, um, in our opinion, and I'm not the first one to say it. I'd like to say I was, but I'm not the first one with the idea of saying that. But let's continue on, gentlemen. Now, given your overwhelming success in the investment community, what keeps you both motivated? Well, I, I think we're very fortunate that we have a range, various range of different businesses. So we don't turn up here every morning and concentrate on brick making or coal mining or whatever other business we have. We have a vast array of different businesses and I always find those very exciting, particularly in, in some of the real businesses where you're out in the field with a coal mine or, as I said, or a, or a, or a new brick factory or one of those types of things where we're, we're just not sitting inside uh, looking at a computer, trying to work out how we're going to get rich or, or poor by doing something on the, on the machine. Yeah, and I think the other thing is that we're a public company. So there's a few things that come with being a public company. One is a lot of shareholders. There's 60,000 shareholders that put their faith in us. And so we feel an obligation to look after their funds and, and, and keep performing for them. And it's a daily measure of our success, you know, in, in our share price. Uh, so that's a constant motivator. You want to get that higher. Uh, and the other, um, the other thing is, uh, you know, our, our team of people like to win. You know, you're in, in, intrinsically motivated to keep winning and keep doing better. And uh, so, you know, last year's win is forgotten. You're moving on to the next thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, can you talk to us a little bit about the Soul Pat's investment philosophy? Uh, our philosophy, I guess, is pretty simple. Common sense, long-term, patient decision-making. And uh, it's amazing that in, in the investment uh, sphere, particularly in public markets, a lot of people don't make those common sense decisions and they are uh, motivated by much... Uh, you know, more noise around short-term events and, and delivering short-term results. Uh, whereas we can just take a more patient view about how things are going to play out over time um, and, uh, and back good people, good businesses, continue to invest in those businesses over time and, and build them up uh, so they become much more valuable in time. I just echo that. Good people. Um, we've grown quite dramatically over the last probably eight or ten years, but we still haven't got any expertise here in brick making or telecommunications or some of the other investments. So we, we rely on good people to manage our investments. And I think that's probably been our key to success over a very long period of time. We've had very good people working for us. And a lot of, a lot of the people, even here now, we've got people who've been here for 20 years. So it's always been a good place to work for. Talking about 20 years and one of the most impressive things about Sol Patterson's, and it's actually more than 20 years, it's 24 years ago, back when our Kathy Freeman was preparing for the Sydney Olympic Games, you guys have been, Sol Pats has been increasing their dividend year on year for 24 years. What's the secrets behind that success? Is it diversification? How was that achieved? I think going back before those 24 years, you've got to remember we listed in 1903. The last year was our 120th year. In that period of time, the company has never missed paying a dividend. When you look at the war years, the Great Depression, uh, recently um, the GFC and even COVID, we've been able to, to pay a dividend each half, which is just absolutely staggering. But no one else in the market's got anywhere near that. And that's why I call you guys the Birkenshire Hathaway of the Australian market. Um, <laughs> continuing on from that, how does Sol Pats go about finding, you guys get in early, how do you guys go about finding the next TPG? How does that happen? 
Uh, well, I think it, it is about getting in early and, and finding businesses that demonstrate really good upside potential to take advantage of tailwinds in the market. So uh, yeah, when we got involved in TPG, as an example, it was actually a distressed television station. And, uh, and then over time, you realise that that investment has all of this additional potential because uh, with the digitisation of, of uh, television, uh, uh, came the opportunity to invest into uh, telecommunications. Uh, and then once we got telecommunications going, we started adding in other bits. Uh, we were very acquisitive. We bought up um, you know, lots of different businesses over the years and built what is now you know, a very significant sized business. And, and so we're trying to do that again with our private equity portfolio. We've got uh, PE investments across agriculture, financial services, education, uh, and, and also the energy transition and mining services. And what we find is, you know, we probably start with businesses that are worth a couple of hundred million dollars. Uh, and then over time, we can continue to, to grow them uh, by investing more capital, but we can also add in other complementary businesses that provide synergies and growth opportunities for those businesses to grow. So if you're taking a long-term approach, and this is where we are differentiated from other private equity players who usually have to return the capital to their investors inside sort of five to seven years. Uh, so they have a much shorter time frame about how they build value in the business, whereas we can take a much longer term and, and build that value over a couple of decades. And, and we think it's a more sustainable uh, way to, to, to grow businesses. And I think yeah. we've got a very, very interesting junior TPG at the moment. Uh, again, David Tio's influence in a company called QS, um, which was, we were going into the Singapore telco market. Uh, we've started there from scratch. We now have 10%, 10 of the market there. Um, we started with mobile and now we've just gone into broadband. So I think that that's a, a company that um, people could have a good look at. QS, it's a Certainly a, a, a very good growth business at the moment. Oh, we'll definitely have a look at that and start getting some exposure. Now, you guys did mention the energy transition and we all know Soul Pats has a significant position in New Hope. Do you feel coal and even everyone's talking about nuclear now and nuclear have a part to play in the energy transition going forward? Well, one of the things that we are, have our strongest conviction on is the need for lots of energy in the future. You know, the, the growing population, urbanisation of the population and the electrification of everything, even if you just think about the move to electric vehicles, but, it, but, it, but then even if you think about artificial intelligence and the, the, the demand that that has on power is, is quite significant. So we think that there's going to be lots of need for additional energy consumed throughout the world. Uh, and in order to meet that growing demand, we're going to need all sorts of energy supply. So there will be a, a component that will be renewables, um, but, but you know, this idea that we can satisfy all of our energy demands through renewables is, is fanciful and, and, and it's just not going to happen inside a, a you know, short time frame or even a medium term time frame. Uh, and so through that, in you know, the next 10, 20, 30 years, there will be a process where all sorts of different energy um, uh, capacity will be will be meeting the energy demands of the world, uh, and that will be increased nuclear and, and, and uranium, and we're invested in uranium. Uh, we think that coal will will continue to play a meaningful role, uh, particularly in the Asian region. That's where we export our coal to. You know, we we don't. You know, coal is not a European or North American or even Australian story. It's, it's, it's consumed in Asia and they're continuing to build coal-fired capacity there uh, and that will be um, utilised for some time. Um, but we also think that there's you know, a whole lot of work to be done in the energy transition space, particularly in Australia, and that's why we have private equity investments that are targeted at, at looking at ways to electrify mine sites in uh, remote locations, uh, look at ways that we can think about the transformation of the grid as it starts to adopt more renewable power and things like that. Now, the other major macroeconomic issue I feel our country is facing is housing shortage. I mean, every second day you hear about a construction company going to administration. 
given um, Sol Pat's exposure in Brickworks, how do you see that play out? Well, as you mentioned, the, the cost structure, particularly in the, in the construction industry, has just got completely, completely out of control. Um, also, shortage of skilled labour. Um, for example, we're, we're building a, um, a retirement village, a retirement unit block down in Cronulla, which is only about three weeks away from being um, completed. Um, we've been struggling to get um, subbies. People, subcontractors come down there and they can't get, get a car spot, so they don't come back again. These sorts of things and, and, and the cost of doing it, the cost of energy is, is, you know, we've got these higher interest rate environment we're in as well, so it, it doesn't look very good at the moment for the, for the building products, unfortunately. Now, recently, Sol Pass has increased their exposure into perpetual. Can you explain why? that decision was made? Well, it was really just uh, simply a view that the stock was very cheap and um, and it was cheap for, for reasons that we could understand. Um, you know, fund managers last year were, were performing quite poorly on the ASX. Um, if you look at any of the, you know, the, the larger stocks like Magellan or uh, Platinum, um, and Perpetual, they were all, all being sold off because of a, a negative view around funds management businesses. Um, but, but Perpetual was quite different in the sense that it had two very high quality businesses um, that were continuing to perform quite well, but their value wasn't being recognised as uh, you know, being part of Perpetual, which is well known as a fund manager. And so our view was that uh, yeah, we could buy the stock cheap uh, and then, and then work with the board and the company to uh, unlock value by uh, splitting up the high quality assets and, um, and and leaving funds management to be able to stand on its own two feet and have a singular focus. And um, and you know, thankfully they adopted that recommendation and uh, and are running a process and the shares have responded quite uh, positively and uh, and so it's been a good trade for us. Right, good to hear. Now that's a very good reasoning there. Now, outside of this, I'd like to know, Todd, your view of the macroeconomic conditions going <laughs> forward. Will inflation calm down for everyone? Give us a bit of a relief. I, I, I'm no expert on the matter, and and and, uh, and I, I don't know that anybody else is. It, it, it is very difficult at the moment to read what's going to happen. You can see that the markets keep getting it wrong. Uh, and in fact, you know, a couple of years ago, the RBA got it wrong. Um, but, but, you know, if you go back before Christmas, we had bond rates falling. And if you look at the US Fed, they were building in six, seven uh, cuts this year alone, this, this calendar year. That's down to about two now. Um, and so, you know, the, the market was overly ambitious about uh, inflation coming down and, and, and the ability to start cutting rates. I think the, the same was true in Australia. Um, so, but yeah, what we are seeing is surprising resilience of economic activity, um, and uh, and so again, it's going to be hard to, to cut rates in, in an environment where things are still moving along okay. Uh, markets are still very hot. Uh, you know, I would say that the the, the price of assets is um, is really not factoring in any downside scenarios. Um, so yeah, we're we're a little bit cautious about that, and 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 you know we we like to prepare prepare ourselves for the worst. And no, no one's been through a period that we've been through before. We've, we 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 have virtually had zero interest rates, which none of us have ever experienced. And now we're coming to a period where they're not they're not high by historical rates, but they're still quite high. And a lot of people have got to refinance it when they're borrowing money. They thought it was a gift from from heaven. And now they've got to pay a lot, a lot higher rate. We've got the higher, higher oil prices. Prices. Um, we all see gold appreciate quite dramatically in the last couple of months. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there. So, gentlemen, given all that uncertainty, where do you feel the best investment opportunities are for Sol Pats? Uh, well, we still continue to see really good pockets of opportunity around the place. Um, you know, with asset prices high, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a, a matter of just buying the market. Um, you've got to really sort of pick your spots, and um, 
and we found little little opportunities here and there. I mean, a few months ago, we started investing significant amounts into a company called NextGen, which uh, is a uranium um, mine that's, that's uh, in development in Canada. Um, you know, we've done very, very well on that. I talked about the perpetual uh, trade that we did. Um, yeah, we, 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 we've been doing a lot of uh, investing in the credit space uh, because we think that it's a way where you can get equity-like returns, and we've been getting up to about 15% um, annualised returns in that portfolio, but in a way where you protect your downside and you're not wearing the capital risk downside. Um, so, you know, we quite like that that part of the, the business. We have also been investing across all of our private equity assets. Uh, and most recently, we bought $200 million packing shed for our agricultural portfolio, which uh, produces uh, horticultural export fruits and things like that. Um, so, but really all of our private equity investments are attracting capital. So we've got enough things in our portfolio to keep us interested and to, to keep finding opportunities. Um, but, but generally, I'd, I'd say we're quite cautious about markets. Now, Rob, readily loves chairmen or directors that back themselves and back their CEOs. Recently, you did that by putting a fair bit of cash back into Soul Pats. Why'd you do it? Well, it's a business I've, I've grown up with and my family's grown up with and we've got an exceptional um, leadership team here at the moment and we, we, which we've had over, over, over many decades, I might add, too, as well. And I prefer to back our people because um, I, I know they're, they're genuine people. Um, we're long-term thinkers. And, you know, this company is starting on a, on, a, on a new cycle, which I think we're going to get bigger and better at going forward. So I'm more than happy to back our present management and also the present management that we have our investment companies with. We've got some very good people managing those various investments that we have as well, as I mentioned before. Without good people, you're going to struggle. So I, I back the good people that I know. Absolutely. And we back you, both of you, gentlemen. Thanks again. It's a real pleasure speaking to you both. Looking forward to having you guys back on soon. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.